Costco is the largest retailer of wine in the United States. You can find wines anywhere from five, six bucks, all the way up to hundreds of dollars. Here today, we're gonna try to find value. I bought six wines from Costco under 15 US dollars. Let's see if they deliver. I think Costco has a really interesting business model. It's highlighted in my friend's book, Mike Viseth, AKA the Wine Economist, in Money, Taste, and Wine. Costco likes to change up the selection so customers always have the sense of discovery. I usually see that apply to wines that are more in the $25, $30 and up range. Some of the more inexpensive wines like you see here, I've seen in numerous Costco's across the US. But again, Costco's are different all across different regions. So these wines might not be available in your area, but maybe they are. Let's get tasting. I haven't tasted any of these wines before. I'm gonna taste in the order I think they should be tasted in, not necessarily price. We'll start out here with the Parducci Small Lot Pinot Noir from Mendocino County, 2022. This is the most expensive wine in the bunch, comes in at $13.99. Mendocino County, a lot of exciting Pinot Noirs coming from that area. I'm amazed that you can do Pinot Noir from California at that price point. That's almost unheard of in my opinion uh, let's get started here okay to start out it smells like Pinot Noir it really does it, like strawberry rhubarb cool strawberry rhubarb flavors it smells really good to be honest it's maybe not as intense as something they'll get for more expensive Pinot Noirs, but the like the cool fruits the red raspberry flavors a little bit of that cool whip type flavor it's not super earthy, it's more on the fruity side. So I think, I mean, people in that price point, I think are gonna get that. Pinot Noir is a red wine grape for wine lovers, a little bit lower in tannin, high in acidity. It's a nice way to transition people that like white wines into red wines. Burgundy, which is the mecca of Pinot Noir, is what wine geeks get into. On the palate, it doesn't have enough concentration or finish to be great, great wine. But Pinot Noir, especially American Pinot Noir, is really hard to get at this price point. You have some of the similar flavors on the back end. The fruit falls off a bit. And these are just minor things. This is maybe for hardcore wine geeks. For a party, though, I think this is absolutely delicious. And sometimes people in this price point or casual drinkers don't want that lingering wine finish. It's fruity, it's tart, it's delicious. I think this is a crowd pleaser. This is what people would expect from Pinot Noir. It's flavors that I expect from New World Pinot Noir. I'm gonna go 88 points. I think it's good. I would like a little bit longer of a finish, but you know what? It's got a screw cap too, and I'm gonna put a screw cap on it because I'm interested to taste that later. I think that's a very solid wine. I definitely recommend that wine. A lot of people ask what glasses I'm using whenever I'm doing tasting videos. If I don't talk about it, I always put the glass in the description box. Today I have my Gabriel glass standard edition because it's a universal glass let's move on here going to portugal country that offers tremendous value for money when you're in the country or even when you're outside the country i think portugal is the way to go wines under 20 bucks are generally going to be very very good this is the vinha cutada vergia this is the red blend 2020 92 points wine enthusiast this is 30 percent oreganes which is also known as tempranillo you also also see this tinta Jordis in portugal Trincadera, local grape from the Alentejo. Syrah, Cabernet Sauvignon. Syrah, 30%, Cabernet Sauvignon, 10%. You'll see on the back label, this says Alentejano, which is one of the appellations. That, or Alentejo, delivers delicious, soft, and affordable, fruity red wines. Let's give this a go. The Portuguese are master blenders. This is dark, inky. This comes in at $8.99. At that price point on paper, it's Portugal, a country I love. I think it should be really good value for money. Okay, it smells like a dark, inky red wine. It's so funny, Portugal has this, ooh, I just spilled a little bit. <laughs> Be careful when you're swirling. I, I'm a clumsy swirler. Sometimes I, and during tastings, I've spilled on people and have gotten pretty upset at me. So, you know, just be careful. I'm the only one here, so I guess I'm all good. Portuguese red wines have this kind of red, dark berry, a little bit of pine type note. Kind of reminds me of the wine from the Dow, a little inkiness. It's It just smells like a red wine. I think people that like bigger reds, this is the nose. It's not chemically at all. It doesn't smell complex. It just smells... Fruity, dark berry fruits, black cherries. Like I said, a little bit of ink. 
maybe a little bit of pepper. It's not super explosive. The flavors aren't delineated. What I mean by that is you can't pick out specific flavors within the glass. They kind of all mowed together, but you know what? It smells pretty good. I think this, the thing about the Alentejo and the Alentejano, these parts of Portugal, they deliver the type of wines that people really like. Rich concentrated fruit, the fruit flavors are sweet. It's not a sweet wine, it's a dry one. But they have this beautiful sweetness. Just a touch of tannin, not a ton. I want the finish to be a little longer. But it's fruity, it's delicious. I mean, wine enthusiasts gave this 92 points. Wine enthusiast, I usually take off for my palate personally, two points, three points, especially for more inexpensive wines. That's generally where I'm at. But again, scores are just a snapshot of a moment in time. It's all about what you like. I think this is solid. I mean, 89 points, and I highly recommend this. It's so funny, we have the difference of opinion here. We have the fruity, nice wine from the Pinot Noir. This is for the bigger and the bolder, but I think this is a nice wine. I mean, I, I'm not joking. I seriously recommend that wine. It's very good. I'm impressed. I want some duds here so I can just kill some wines. Okay, moving on. We have the Chianti Classical Reserva. This is the Kirkland Signature brand. This is the brand where they have wine experts go out and find tanks of wines all around the world. Then they bottle them under their own label, put the label of them. Chianti Classical Reserva 2021. This comes in at $10.99 made of the grape Sangiovese. You know I'm a nut. I could I picked this out because I love Sangiovese and I saw it and I said, hey what? I can't ignore it. Although I'm a little bit skeptical of great Chianti Classico at the 1099 price point. But who knows here? Let's give it a smell here. This is the first wine so far where I don't like it. On the nose it has that chemically type of flavor, aroma. By the way, Costco is not sponsoring this video. I wish they would sponsor a bunch of these videos. I went out and bought all these wines. In total, I spent just over 60 bucks. You get a 10% discount when you buy six bottles at a time at Costco. This smells like oak, vanilla, and chemical type. It burnt, this doesn't smell good. On the palate, it's a little fruitier than the nose. It's a little bit less tannic than normal Chianti Classico based on a grape Sangiovese grape. You know, I love usually pretty high in tannins that where you get that drying sensation. It's not as dry. You're definitely gonna need meat here. 10.99, I don't think I recommend this wine. I mean, it's not awful. It's not faulty for me. I'm about 84-ish. I was definitely expecting more. I'm reviving my wine shopping series. I'll put a link to the playlist of my wine shopping and I'll pin it in the top comment. I do like doing these videos. I want to do more of them, but I have to go out and buy these wines. A way that you can help support to see more of these videos. A couple things, you can watch this video all the way through. Helps push it through the YouTube algorithm. You can share it with wine lovers, people that are looking for a bargain. Or you can tip me, you can click the three dots and give me a super thanks. All that money, I promise, will go to doing other wine shopping videos. I might do ones like Kroger, Target, or even Costco at different price points. I'd like to, but I need your support. Let's move on. We have the Bordeaux, the Chateau Cantaloupe Lestage, Blaye, Cote de Bordeaux, 2020, 90 points. Wine enthusiast, this comes in at $5.99. Wow. A lot of people, when they think of Bordeaux, they think of the big names, wines that cost hundreds, thousands of dollars, but Bordeaux is a huge appellation, one of the biggest in the world. I think there's over 60 sub-appellations in Bordeaux. Don't quote me on that. I don't remember off the top of my head. I think Blaye is one of those that offers value for money. Also, maybe you want to look for Fronsac, Castillan, Cote de Bordeaux. These are all on the right bank, so they're base more and Merlot. I don't know this exact breakdown. We'll see here, $5.99. I don't know how producers in France can survive on that. There is a big problem in Bordeaux, actually, with growers because there's more quantity than there is demand. Uh, let's take a look here. This is the type of wine, you know, when you have that wine person in your life where you give them a wine you're so proud of and they smell like, smells like red wine. That's what this smells like. It just smells like red wine, kind of like a unripe cherry a little bit. It does, it's not as chemically smelling as the Kirkland wine, but not super exciting either. It's fruity. There's a little spike of intensity on in the back end, a little bit of tannins. When people think of Bordeaux, they think of bigger, more powerful wines. This is not, comes in at 13.5 alcohol. 
This is like a barbecue house part. I, there are some tannins here. Maybe restaurants use this by the glass. I mean, I like it. I think it's a little bit less chemically than the Kirkland. Uh, I'm going to give it 85 points. Definitely not 90. Again, wine enthusiast, I think you got a little bit excited there. It's okay. I don't recommend that. <laughs> Let's move on here. <sighs> I think the video will be a little bit more exciting when I do the videos in the higher price point. Next up, we have a couple of American wines. One of these is a favorite. We have the Bogle Family Vineyard. I've seen this in supermarkets all around the U.S. This is the Old Vine Zinfandel 2021. This comes in at $9.99. I think it's certified green. I don't know if it's organic or not. I know that Bogle, I don't think that Bogle is bought by one of the big companies like Constellation or Gallo. A lot of times in the supermarket, you'll see all these different wines, but in America, at least they're just three or four companies, big companies that bottle wines under different labels. Zinfandel, a lot of people think of Zinfandel as white Zin, that rose sweet drink, but Zinfandel is actually a red grape. It's known as Primitivo in Southern Italy and its origins in the Adriatic region in Croatia, they call it Sardianic Kastelensky. They call it Tribidrag in Montenegro, they call at Kratosia, so that's just a little fun fact. Usually bigger, more powerful wines. When you see Old Vine on the label in America, there's no real regulation for that, unlike some other parts of the world where there are regulations where vines have to be a certain age before you put Old Vine in them. So let's give us a go here. Okay, this smells ripe. Big. I like that it's not too oaky. It's definitely more like a strawberry jam blackberry jam pepper type flavor one of the main components of making more expensive wine is using high quality grapes higher quality raw material it's just like cooking you're going to have better raw material you're going to have a better meal so it's not as complex on the nose but you know i think a lot of people are going to like it even get some prunes a lot of people like these bolder richer wines but the pinot noir is more my style or even the, the portuguese wine Wow. This is a bigger, richer wine. It's much more complex on the palate than it is on the nose. You start to get these little complexities of nuances of earth and pepper, along with the dark, dark fruit. I like that there's a spike of intensity, just a touch of tannins, that drying sensation on the palate. This is very good. I think people that say they're cab drinkers in this price point, I think a lot of cabs are pretty unexciting, uh, especially American cabs when they're cheap, cheaper like this. Might really like Zinfandel. You have some of those sweeter fruit flavors, although it is a dry wine, there is complexity here. I highly recommend this. I'm gonna say 89 points. I think it might be even a little bit better wine than the Portuguese wine, although the Portuguese wine's more my style. Good job, Bogle. I highly recommend that. Okay, finishing up with Cabernet. That's what everybody likes. Cabernet Sauvignon, a grape that hails from Bordeaux, responsible for some of the most expensive, the most long-lasting wines in the world. This is the Pyramid Scheme Cabernet Sauvignon from California, 2021. This was also $9.99 by the Precision Wine Company. 91 points, wine enthusiast. Let's give this a go. If you see on the label, the wine just says California. It means the grapes can come throughout the state. Then they blend the wines together. If you see things like Napa, Sonoma, Santa Barbara County, these are Appalachians. They're smaller, so you know that they're from a specific area. We'll see. Nice label. $9.99 for a USA Cabernet. I'm just worried it might be an Oak Bomb, which wines in this price point sometimes can be. Yeah, it's got a lot of vanilla flavors. Stereotypical, the Cabernet flavors in this price point. A lot of vanilla, black fruit. When you have some of these wines that are cheaper, it's the difference between having like a fresh piece of fruit, like a fresh orange, if you ever had one off the tree, you cut it open, you taste it, you smell it, versus one that's been sitting in the supermarket for a little while. It usually has a little bit less intensity of flavors. That's what you're gonna get here. Yeah, just vanilla, black cherry. On the palate, it's big. Some sweetness from vanilla, which people at this price point are going to like. Some people, some of you like it. That's fine. <sighs> Definitely not 91. More in like the 86 point type of range. I think people that like this flavor profile, I think they'd enjoy it more drinking the Bogle. So, that you know, the wines I recommend are the Bogle, the Portuguese wine, and the Pinot Noir. So tell me, have you ever had any luck hunting wines at Costco under $15? Any of your favorites? I'd love to hear. Drop it in the comments below.